Hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation on transitioning toward independence, financing collaborative self-management of children with type 1 diabetes. I'm Yun Jung Cha, a PhD student at the University of Michigan School of Information. This research was conducted with my co-authors, Arpeda Saxana, Alice Wu, Joyce Lee, Mark Newman, and Sun Young Park. Managing type 1 diabetes, T1D, is challenging because patients are usually diagnosed at an early age, and it requires lifestyle daily treatments such as checking blood sugar, heart counting, and doing insulin injections. For children, T1D management is even more challenging due to their lack of ability to practice self-care, and parents need to help them until they become fully independent. Therefore, throughout the children's gradual transition toward their independence, it is important that parents shift and share care tasks so that the children could effectively carry out self-care when they become fully independent. Patient independence has been a focus of HCI and medical studies, and prior studies have shown how patients and their caregivers collaborate in everyday life to achieve patient self-management. In pediatric care, children gain dependence in illness management by parents educating and transferring skills to their child. However, the practice of transferring care from parents to children is complicated, and how they collaborate while the children become more independent is not well studied in the literature. Therefore, our study aims to investigate how children and parents collaborate to manage T1D and examine how the children become more independent in their self-management through the support of their parents. In this study, we aim to first understand the challenges that they faced, second, identify the strategies parents developed, and third, provide design implications for technologies supporting their collaboration. To realize this goal, we conducted semi-structured interviews with pairs of children and their parental caregivers. For each child caregiver pair, uh, the interview sessions lasted about an hour, and the child and the parent were interviewed separately. A total of 20 pairs participated, and the children were between 6 to 12 years old. For the child interview, we used six scenarios about children's diabetes management so that children could better recall their own experiences. For instance, the scenario A indicates a child checking blood sugar, and the scenario B indicates a child eating a snack in school. After the interview, we conducted the thematic analysis on the transcript. Our findings show that two main factors are crucial for children's transition toward independence in their illness management, knowledge of illness management, and motivation to engage in self-care. Based on these two factors, we identified the four types of child collaboration in illness management. For instance, if a child has no knowledge and low motivation, the child is categorized as a dependent type while collaborating with their parent. If a child has high knowledge but low motivation, the child has a resistant type of collaboration. A typical example was a child having snacks without telling his parents for taking insulin. Next, if a child has low knowledge and high motivation, the child has an eager type of collaboration. For instance, C7 wanted to do most of her care by herself when she was only seven years old. Lastly, if a child has high knowledge and high motivation, the child has an independent type of collaboration. Now, a child can change between the different types. Most children started from the dependent type of collaboration when they were first diagnosed because they were very young, but they gradually became more independent as they gained more knowledge and motivation with support of their parents. For each collaboration type, we analyze their challenges and parental strategies. First, the children who are dependent in collaboration were usually younger children who had difficulties with understanding diabetes management or the importance of self-care due to their limited cognitive skills. For the transition from the dependent to the independent type, parents taught urgent parts of self-care skills, 
such as reaching out for help and emphasize the importance of self-care to their child. Second, the children who were resistant passively collaborated with their parents and often faced conflicts with their parents. For the transition from the resistant to the independent type, parents gave rewards, they involved their child in the decision-making process and created a comfortable environment for the child. Third, for the children who were eager to collaborate, their parents had challenges if they were anxious about their child engaging in self-care too quickly. For the transition from the eager to the independent type, parents quickly learned about t and then educated their child with the help of health professionals. Lastly, the children who were independent in collaboration sometimes faced emotional struggles when they did not feel confident about self-care. For maintaining the independent type, parents supported their child to feel safe while doing self-care and adjusted the child's engagement level. Based on these findings, we found that a child's level of loneliness and motivation are fundamental in their transition toward independence and collaborative care. Moreover, these factors can determine whether the collaboration is child-initiated or parent-initiated. The child-initiated collaboration was sparked when children were more proactive in learning about t and management. This often facilitated the child's rapid transition into independence and led to successful collaboration between the parents and their child. On the other hand, parent-initiated collaboration was sparked when children were slowly in gaining motivation and relatively passive in their preparation. Therefore, it is crucial for parents to monitor and identify their child's state of knowledge and motivation in order to develop strategies to facilitate effective collaboration. Based on our study insights, we suggest three main design implications for technologies to support child-parent collaboration and chronic illness management. First, identifying the child's knowledge and motivation levels to support children with different levels of knowledge and motivation. Second, developing strategies for child-initiated or parent-initiated T1D management to support children's interests and recommend strategies that should be implemented first. Third, adjusting the child-parent involvement level to ensure children are not overburdened and feel confident with self-care. For further details and more discussions, please refer to our paper. Thank you for coming and feel free to reach out to me during the conference or via email.